G'day, Nathan from Aussie Acca here yet again to continue the AutoCAD Architecture Roof Object uh, tips and secrets. I'm going to today have a look at uh, dormer windows and uh, dormer roofs really and uh, just compare them to this uh, file that was floating around for a while on using slabs to create dormers and I want to just share some tips about using uh, the AutoCAD roof object without resorting to slabs. The first one, very simple, just uh, doing a bit of showing off, showing what the thing can do. If you grab grips, you can move them around and get the roof that you want. Uh, go back to uh, the series, the number 11, cutting holes in the roof object, and also dormer windows, how to cut holes. That'll show you some great tips about how to uh, join these in together with the actual roof object. Uh, this next one, uh, just we got, um, oh there we are, the flat roof, um, just showing you, of course you probably wouldn't do this, but just letting you know you can do it, and I just outsmarted myself, you can, that's probably a better way to do it. You can get a flat roof out of a pitched roof by just uh, stretching those hips. Uh, next one, well that's easy enough, we won't worry about that. This next one, getting this little flat roof on the top there, very, very simply just adding an extra pitch to the face. So we go under here, click on that face, that's the height above that height. We give it one degree, done. We've got, no, I did it to the wrong one. Uh, where we've done it here, well, um, we've got our flat roof. Now, just to show you a trick that the maker says is a a bug, but if you give it zero, you will get a hole. And if you pick up on that, there's another tip there as well. So it does; it can be very small, um, but it's got to it can, it's got to be more than zero. Okay, they're easy enough. Now, this is where it starts to get tricky. You can create some separate objects, and maybe I'll come back and visit that. I want to actually look at the same shapes, but where they are um, connected to the roof. Now, whereas this one will, at this point, have to be separate roof objects and composited in a mass group, which I think still has some really good advantages. This one here can be actually created out of the one object. There's no need to go to separate uh, objects for each bit, which, which gives you great advantage because uh, it works out where it joins itself. You don't have to do it yourself. So let's have a look at that. Well, just recapping on the trick to get uh, the curved roof, we drag that forward. Now you see that won't drag forward. Sometimes that happens when the roof gets a little bit complex. And we do our polygon command. Went through this on the web, actually the polygon uh, command was a tip from a, a reader, which thank you very much. It's a great tip. And uh, yes, and uh, we do center and then inscribe, get there. Now we do inscribe so that that first pitch is sloping rather than straight up. We do dim base from here on in, and that goes from the same point. Uh, we go to our dim angle. These are, I'm using my shortcuts in the command line, so they're different to what you'll probably won't work for you. So feel free to copy them. And we do each one of these edges. And I'm just going to use mass uh, match properties because this isn't my file and couldn't adjust them. And we get some great figures. Now what we do is we just go and pick our roof object and we pick this edge and what we do that first face is 83 this is uh, now I'm just going to do I'm just going to start add these faces but I'm just going to start with the slope first I don't have to be super accurate here all right um, it's only an approximation anyway and but you can get as accurate as you want then come back here and I'm going to use my Now, I've done it with no overhang. It might be a little bit different with overhang. Uh, 
7.91.882. And that's a great approximation of a curve. Now let's see if I can show you a trick. It's worth trying, but if we we need to add these to the other side. Now I can do one or two ways. I can go and add them again, which is easy enough. Um, and I've started to do it all. Oh, we can do here, we go to edge one, go to here and we paste. Now that hasn't worked for me, but it does work sometimes and there is a problem in this dialog box which could be fixed very easily. But you can copy, go to the next one and paste the same thing, all right? Uh, have a go. If it doesn't work, then we know that it's it's uh, simple enough to do it manually anyway. But I'm not going to go right through that now because I'm going to run out of time. But we know if we do the other side, we get a nice circle. Now, you will notice that the roof object can't keep a constant width. And you actually notice that on this one as well. And I think maybe it assumes this is the, the one to go parallel to. So the width comes off your main roof pitch, which is probably the one in your... Uh, properties palette and then everything else just adjusted uh, to get around that I use a um, a fascia panel AutoCAD doesn't uh, oops we've shifted it forward um, AutoCAD does not update properly thanks guys and I would just stick that there now you can do this by going into elevation I won't do it but going into elevation drawing an arc and then applying this style to the arc to uh, get it right okay now let's just go back to a better view of that uh, just some quick little things uh, there's no overhang on here so what I've done here I use the trim trick to create a I use the trim trick to just create an edge so you've, I've got an edge there so it comes in goes there there now this gives me my edge to put a pitch and that's 60 degrees to get this very sharp little gable and this one here is 90 and 90 basically it get, just gets ignored if it's one slope and you can see I've done that on both sides both sides just in there's a tiny little nick in the roof we need that edge to give it the pitch and then we need to do that now I could just as easily uh, create a um, a little box out here uh, if there is some reason why this doesn't particularly work but sometimes I won't go into it but sometimes that can do different things but you can see it's really had no effect it's the same sort of thing but it's uh, if you can create it out of one uh, you know one edge well you know all the better this one here to in order to get this to overhang itself we need to have this little dog leg. So we come when we're tracing our roof shape, we come in, go up, come in at square, but come in at square at a known distance, and then you can just stretch it up at 45, and then you can just stretch this whole thing to almost there, and it'll disappear. You won't know it's there. And you can see that it. Uh, I've altered the overhang. I'm going to run out of time here, but if I stretch this just back now, watch what happens around this area here. Uh, if once I stretch it past itself, it'll fail, all right? Uh, and I could just adjust the overhang to that. So if we get this just past there, then it will build, and you'll get your dormer window. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, and I'm sure if you think about it, that's a lot easier. I probably can't drag any of these. I probably can't drag these. Use your shift command. If you can't do that, if that doesn't work, then you can still come in and use uh, some other, you know, the edge commands, and you can still got control of your roof. Uh, you just can't do it automatically, but you know, isn't that much better? It works out where this joins. It works out the angle angle of this. If you go back and change that pitch, it'll work it out automatically. You don't have to go do it. And uh, there it is, dormer windows. Very rarely do I do dormer windows, and very rarely would I ever uh, convert to slabs. Why make my life more difficult? Hope that's helpful to you. Cheers.